So, Arsenal 3, Manchester United 1, Manchester United in the bin. Johnny Evans and Harry Maguire at centre-back. That club is buried. Kenny, the big smile on your face. You were at the game. You wasn't one of the fans because they panned in and showed a load of Arsenal fans leaving at 2-1. Yeah. They missed the best goal of the game. <laughs> no, no <laughs> as I said, as, as I, I always stay to the end, but I, let me tell you something now. This is a podcast. This is that game is two podcasts because you have to analyze it from start to finish. And I said nil nil, and I said nil nil for reasons because I thought both teams lacked the sort of uh, creative quality um, to break each other down. Definitely for Man United, and definitely for us. We had probably the better players on show, but you looked at it, both teams sit the cats to each other out. You know, we didn't take the opportunity to sort of um, punish Man, Man, Man United for their midfield because by playing Ericsson. And Fernandes and leaving Casemiro on her own. I don't think we took we took the option to try and outnumber them in the field. But give them their choose, Fernandes and Ericsson worked their nuts off today. And mm. you know, that perhaps on another day they probably would have come with the spoils because obviously they had the gold to sell out from uh, Guy Nacho. He looked onside from where we were sitting at the grand. You know, then there was a penalty where where we were from where we we looked at it, Havertz was behind the person who supposedly fouled him. So I don't know. Uh, so uh, so yeah, you were you you were you were, 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 were Wembasaka never touched him. Yeah, no, we we could see it for we are. So we were laughing because we knew <laughs> that Havertz made made contact rather than the other way around. So we we thought that get over that get overturned. But one thing you have to look at is that you mentioned um, Havertz, you know, off camera about how he was he was made he was poor and in essence he gave the ball away a lot. He lacks a lot of confidence. You know, that chance the fir first half where only he knows why he didn't, he didn't connect. That, that, that it, will not be top this season, mate. That is uh, the worst miss this season. Yeah, yeah, and it, then it, and two, five, five minutes later, he gives the ball away. With a, yeah, and, and, they, and they score. They score. But what, what he did is that we reacted well to then scoring a goal where we played our football. We passed the ball with a purpose. We used a spare man, which was Odegaard. And, you know, and look what happened. Odegaard, um, mate... You know, like I said, makes it 1-1. And then afterwards, I thought it became really cagey. There were instances during that match where Rashford was getting a lot of space on a counter attack because we were giving the ball away. So it was a case of May United playing the back, um, playing the break, us trying to, um, you know, like I said, take the game to May United, but not taking the risk because there were times when, you know, like uh, Martin Elliott's making the run, you know, Eddie's making the run. But the way we play at Arsenal, we can't give the ball away. We've got to play it short passes and movement because there were long balls on. I think that's where we where we sometimes play in the opposition's hands by trying to play the instrument play that Arteta demands because when we try to do it, a lot of Man United's counter attacks were times when when they were, they were breaking up the play. You know what I mean? And I think that's what um, we, we did re really, Man United did really well. So they broke the play and then when they broke the play and made one pass, we were playing Russian roulette the way we played. And then there was another time where you kind of Although, um, you know, Ramsdale made a good save from um, Martial, I think there's a double save as well. There was instances where you, you thought that Ramsdale was part of the problem, where, again, he, in terms of doing what Anada does, where he, instead of passing the ball you know, to, a, to the nearest shot, he's hit it long, may not have to create an attack from there because they win the ball back. So there's lots of instances where I think we're, we're caught between two stalls. We're caught from between playing how we played last season and playing this new style that Arteta wants us to play. And it's it's confusing the hell out of us. You know, Havertz is part of the problem. He doesn't know whether to, um, um, like I said, come and take the ball off the back four or help out Eddie. And when he's in, when he's in um, like I said, attacking in, um, areas, him and Eddie are running into each other's spaces. So you've got to have a situation that if Havertz is going to play, you can't play Eddie in the team. You've got to play someone like Jesus, <coughs> who, who has more movement and has more intelligent play where Eddie needs to be that guy at the top. But Havertz is going there because, you know, sometimes if we do try to play it long, he's got that the build and the ability to hold the ball and then turn. So that's an, a conundrum like where, where Havertz is creating a conundrum as it speaks. Declan Rice, oh my God, what a performance. What a bloody performance. You know, we we know we know um you know like um Partey's our best player, but the way David Rice um, masters it today. There were instances where he only made one mistake where he gave the ball away and they went on the attack. And um, But 
apart from that, it was breaking up a lot of Man United's um, play. Ains, you know, he scored a second goal. A bit fortuitous, sort of deflection. And Nana probably would have been disappointed with it. But, you know, it was definitely a man of match performance from um, Declan today. Oh, 100%. Yeah, for me, it was him or Martinelli that was getting yeah. it today. And, and that goal cemented it for me because it is taken to Arsenal like a duck to water. Well, now, it, again, it, it, he's proud to play for the club. That's all we want. Somebody that's yeah, proud yeah. that can have and, the ability to back it up as well. Yeah, and he's been brilliant. So just, just, and just yeah. think, he's a Chelsea fan as well. He's a Chelsea fan. He ain't one of us. He ain't one of us. If, you know, crazy. yeah, even any of Chelsea fans, yeah, they, they're working that stuff for us. I thought Eddie was starting to service today. You know, he wasn't did able you to. Do think that was a red card when Dallow kicked him? Right? Do, do you think that was a because there was a covering centre back? Yeah. But yeah, I, we, I, 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 I did say red. I did say red when it. But you know, as um, a friend to me uh, was next to me said, you know what? There's a covering centre back. Yeah. And it was a it was the occasion. Had that but had that been Arsenal against say someone Arsenal West Ham or Arsenal against um, someone like um, not the Forest, the player goes off. When it's Arsenal May United, where you expect yeah. those sort of blood and thunder tackles, um, Taylor wasn't going to send him off. It's like it's like the disallowed goal. From where where we were we looking, he looked like a Ganacho was on. But you guys and um, when you yeah, watch he, it, he was off. He was. Yeah. So so it's one of those things. But but you look at it, that goal. That wasn't happened because J- Jesus lost the ball, and rather than lose the ball and go and, and get it back, he he feigned injury, and yeah. then that, that's when they could have scored. So these are instances where, if you're if you're Pep Guardiola, to Man City watching that, you think you know what the title it's a buy, and I think we've got to be realistic. If you if you if you take take the whole game, and you say yeah it's three points, but we're still doing the mistakes that we did last season. You know, the game against Bournemouth, the game against Aston Villa, giving the ball away, you know, teams having clear runs at our goalkeeper. And it's one of those things where, you know, there's levels between Man City and both teams. Man United are a different kettle of fish. I know we've got Man United fans who watch our shows. They have to be very, very worried that despite the money, the fact they spent a lot of money, they're still a golfing class between us and them. Yeah. Let alone Man City. But on Johnny Evans. Yeah, and they brought on Maguire as well to play for a draw. They let's not face it, Man United can't them for a draw or, or a scrappy one nil because mm. of the fact that you know he knows he knows that uh, he was hoping that we went down the left hand side rather than through the middle. But what he didn't bank on is that we play for the whole minutes, not just the ninety, any yeah. any bit of the injury time. So if there's four minutes injury time, we'll carry on. There's ten minutes injury time there, which there was, or twelve minutes, we carry on to the final whistle, and that's what Man United didn't bank on. That, and that's why when you play for a point, it's risky business. But we, 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 we ourselves, we have to enjoy this result. Enjoy the, the the fact that you know that we it's three points on the board, and then afterwards we we analyse it. But I have to be, I have to temper a lot of people's um, you know enjoyment. And brothers have sent me a tech, admit he's buzzing. And he's <laughs> when um someone that uh, when uh, when a uh, you you have to be buzzing when you when you when you win a game like that. When you score two goals in injury time against your rivals, the team that used to challenge in the in the in the nineties for the title, and then and then you get a third one which breaks your heart. You have to, and I get it. You have to, um, you know, you know, ce- celebrate that. Yeah. And but if you want to analyze it and pick the bones out of it, you know, had. Had it been one-one, we, me and you would be having a different, different perspective of the game. And it, and it was We're, looking like it was going to be one-one. Listen, no go. Yeah. Like Saka had a great chance, but straight at the goalkeeper. And I thought again, yeah. he was poor today. Yeah, yeah he, he, he was. He, he was. He was. But and I thought, although you said Martinelli, you like he, he, he did a lot. And I think what, why you're impressed with Martinelli is because Martinelli did a lot off, you know, outside the box where he tried to play that kind of um, deeper role, which he did very well. But he was knackered. You know, I think he was even before he was taken off. He should have been taken off ten minutes before he was taken off. And you know, the substitutions you know were were were, were correct. You know, Havertz struggled today, so you know, bringing on Vieira was good for him. He I thought Sinchenko. Well when he came on. Yeah, I thought Sinchenko was defensively was on a was a waste of space, but on the ball was brilliant. So it was it was a good decision to bring on um, Tommy Asin, and I thought Eddie he said well, no stuff. Well. So, yeah, yeah I thought, well, Tom, Tom, I said play well. And I thought Eddie was just Eddie. It's one of those things that if you play Eddie and Havertz together, 
it's, it's a case where, from a forward point of view, they're running into each other's spaces. Yep. Yeah, 100%. So, and, I, and I think that, that's that's what it, how it looked to me. So, basically, it's when, you know, basically, um, Eddie ineffective, ineffective. You look at last week, Havertz is off the pitch, Eddie has more space, he scores his goal. You know what I mean? He gets his goal to the 2-1. That's about Havertz in the team. Well, yeah, yeah because, because, because simple reasons that he's making everything lopsided in a very, very like, negative way. You know what I mean? Mm, yeah, 100%. Listen, get him safely, mate. And, um, yeah, all right, very quickly before we go, that Jesus goal was class, wasn't it? The way he sent Dallo, man. Uh, Rumour has it, he's still sliding. I don't know who's well, the no, 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 he's, he's, he's still, he's still sliding. I'll tell you one thing, right? <laughs> that, that We need to see more of that from Jesus, you know what I mean? When he's fully, fully, fully cooking, we're going to need goals from We're going to need goals from all over the place. Because, yeah, they... It's going to be times where we're going to have to grind results out like we did today because the quality of passing is not there. The the cohesion between them, um, the whole team isn't there. We're still we're still carrying players, i.e. Um, Kai at the moment. So it's just grinding out results. But time waits for no one in this league. We're going to get to a situation where we, we're we going to be the ones chasing rather than Man City. And everyone knows that Man City chase better than we'll ever do. That's why... We've got to start getting that pattern of play and start getting um, getting these wins on the board and getting a settled line of play because we don't want to be in a situation where Man City have a, too much of a gap because they're yeah. going to be uncatchable. Playing like they are now, they're going to be uncatchable. They've got no weaknesses in their team. Tactically, they're in tune. Everyone's worth their place aside. Alvarez is not... There's not a gap in quality between Al Alvarez and Haaland and that's the situation. We've got a gap in quality between... Uh, certain players in our team mm, yeah 100 percent. listen get home safely mate and um yeah we've got three points against the manx it ain't easy <laughs> yeah it is off they're, they're, they're in bits i've had a few man united fans going past me and i saw roy Keane in the stadium he's not happy at all <laughs> i'll have to check out it's talk after get home safe mate love you mate. all right speak to you definitely yeah, mate.